It's the Sawcast, and I go by the name of Steve-O. It's Wayne in this thing. And I'm Ariel. What's up, y'all? We got a very, 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 very special guest today. Guest yes. co-host in the building. Introduce yourself, guest. I'm Tan. Ariel Steven And it's Tan's birthday, y'all. Ooh. Ooh. Happy birthday, Happy mom. birthday mom. mom. And I'm Dwayne's. Uh, tea. Oh, she's the Wayne. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, sir. <sure. laughs> so, um, today we're going to do things a little bit differently. We don't really have a topic um, that we really like this week. So, we're going to do all current events on this podcast, okay? Keep it current. Okay. okay. And to, you know what I'm saying? I know everybody probably with their family. Well, I guess they, you guys are probably listening to this at work or something like that. Maybe. Yeah, everybody probably listening to this at work on the go and, you know, on the move. Okay. All right, um, so the first current event is, we're just going to jump right into it, y'all. We're about to just try to do this as fast as possible. Wayne, little Wayne, is engaged to a real thick super, uh, supermodel. Her name is Letitia Thomas. Yeah. Australian plus size. She's model. fire. She's the only person Wayne follows on Instagram, so he fuck with her. You know what I'm saying? It's real. So my question is, are y'all messing with the big fines or no? Nah? Y'all like big fines and what y'all think about them? Steven? I feel like my mother is a big fine. <laughs> so it was like that That had a lot to do with, with uh, my mother. What do you consider a big fine, though? What you mean? Steven and Wayne, what do y'all consider a big fine? I don't know. You big fine? I mean, you know. Like... What do you consider plus size? Plus size? Right, plus What's size. What's plus size? Like, whatever plus size is. I mean. Like, when you look at a female, how do you know, like, like, like what is it? You that know she's she plus size. <laughs> how? I mean, off of appearance. Okay, what appearance gives them? It's a certain scale, you know? After a certain weight, I guess you would say, it would mm-hmm. be plus size for a woman. I guess that's how you would categorize it. I guess plus size is like weight. So what's like the weight limit to make you plus size? I don't know. You're a woman. So you know what the weight would be. I think honestly, to keep it 100, I think it's all about how you carry yourself because I feel like there are some women that can be looked at as just thick, but they would probably be the same weight as a plus size person and vice versa. So I think that it just depends on the girl you're looking at. So you talking about body type? Yeah, I feel like people carry their they weight differently. Even if she has a certain body type, she can still be plus size. She just feel out differently. I feel like when you plus size is a is a, is a difference than like body type. You yeah. know what I'm saying? She can have a certain body type and still be plus size. Okay. I say plus size. That's just whichever you know after a certain weight, then you plus size. Mama, what do you what do you think plus size is? Well, it's just, I just say if you're a certain thickness, you know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. can look at a girl and tell, you know, if she's thick, then she's, you know, she might be plus size. If she's a little thicker than your average, mm-hmm. I say just thicker than your average. Okay. You know, then that okay. Would be plus size, you know, so that's that's what I think. Mama, as Steven said, he thinks you're big fine. So, like, as a big fine, have you ever had it? issue with like finding men like have, has that ever been a problem for you <laughs> well absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> never been a problem for me and um i don't think it's a problem for women especially in me either in 2020 you right. know it doesn't matter the fellas kind of like a little thickness now they really you know do i guess confidence i mean and you know i just like different men like different women you know what I'm saying? So some men may like the thin women, some may like the thick. Mm-hmm. But girl, ladies, if you're thick, don't worry. You can still get a man. They like all different kind of women. One man don't like the same kind of woman. You know, so there's so many different men, and they like different body types. They like different women. Mm-hmm. They like different things about us, you know. So ladies, just always be confident in yourself. And don't worry about a man because you can get one. They're really not that hard to get. <laughs> but mom, like what? Like I mean, it's they're not that hard to get, but like quality ones are. You know, what do you think about that? Well, absolutely, uh, quality men are an issue for us in twenty twenty. 
you know, it is an issue. Quality men. You know, so... Mama, like, what, was you, what would you say quality man is? What was your... What's uh, your definition uh, of what yeah. quality man what is? What would... Yeah. Give us a few different... <laughs> well, I say from... I'll start out saying that a quality man is a man that is self-confident and is educated and has life goals and has a lot of respect for the opposite sex. And that's what I feel a really good What's man t- What is. kind of men normally have like respect for the opposite sex? In my opinion, like I normally date, I normally date guys who are like mama's boys because I feel like they have the most respect for women. But I think, I don't know, sometimes like, even if you're not a mama's boy, men who are raised by their grandmothers too sometimes have but then again, they they're not they don't have their grand their mother there. So then sometimes they get disrespectful. So I feel like a lot of times men who don't grow with their mothers are more so not right. respectful towards women, not really super quality like immediately. It takes time for them to be, you know, a quality man. Like they they have to they have to go through some stuff because I mean, the first woman that they ever loved you know what I'm saying? Didn't raise them, didn't, you know what I'm saying? Wasn't around them. So I think that the most quality men were raised with their mother. That's just my opinion, though. Okay, so let's go back to it. Yeah. And let's ask Wayne. Why are you know. messing with the big pond? Do you like big pond, Wayne? All right. It don't matter. You don't, don't care? And Wayne, you don't have to say that because Auntie's big fine. Like, speak your true opinion. <laughs> <laughs> It don't matter what it is. So what? So okay. So so it don't matter. So what specifically attracts you to a specific woman? To any woman? That's a different question. Definitely. That's a question that I'm asking right now. Ain't nobody else get asked that question. <laughs> but, but mama, mama asks answer different questions. But then I like I like big fines. You know what I'm saying I like all women, but I like big fines too. But I'm saying since you said it don't matter, then you know what I'm saying? What would you be looking for? Somebody smart. Okay. I think Wayne described what he likes. He definitely said, like, somebody would. Go oriented. He did. <laughs> he he got to be about did. your paper. Or he see you later. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I want to all see me. So you are messing with Big Fong. Yeah, I'm messing with Big Fong. But also, the thing that, uh, since I'm a light skin, I like light skin too. So that's kind of a preference to me. All women are beautiful. All black women are beautiful. Dark skin, you know, all tones. But yeah, I feel like because my mother, that was like that's like they say like that like that's the first person mm-hmm. that you gain like you know love for in a, in, a, in a woman. So that's true. So then it's like oh yeah, you know I want, I want somebody. You always you know how women want somebody like their father. Men want somebody like their mother. Some uh, most of the times too. Mm-hmm. So it's like yeah. You know what I'm saying? My mother's light skin and she's pretty. So, yeah, of course I would want a light skin, pretty woman, too. Hmm. Thank you, son. <laughs> well, as far as Big Fond are concerned, of course, like, I've definitely been in that arena where I was Big Fond and I probably still am to some. So, like, I mean, I feel like it, it's never stopped. Like, I have cousins that are way bigger than you would think and they don't have problems, never have problems with getting dudes. They get dudes constantly. So I've never seen that a, a big fine ever have a problem getting a man like never in my life. Confidence so I just don't. I right, they do got a lot of confidence though. So I don't even believe that any size shape like Mama said is is going to prevent you from getting anything that you want because it's somebody out there that likes it. It's plenty of people actually that like it now. So like right. Mama said, and they like they willing to like. They willing to like show the world that they like it too. Now I don't know how it was in Mom's day. They might have liked it. They might like skinnier girls back then. What? No, no. It's it's always been um, different men mm-hmm. like different women. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just their preference. You know, and it's not one size fits all. It's just what a guy likes. You know, and some like thin women, some like thicker women, and that's just how it is. Okay. Well, we can wrap that up. I think we're all in agreement that everybody fucks with big fines at this point in 2020. Yeah, it's it's up, just up. a regular body type. It's not even like if you're a big fine, you should not feel bad about your size. Like it's you're fine. Like nothing's wrong with you. You'll be okay. 
Just don't get too big, you know what I'm saying, without going to the doctor. Because you don't want to get too big because then you're going to have health problems right. and we don't want you to die. We want you to live. Right. You but, you, you know what I'm saying? Do what you got to do. Stay healthy. Stay healthy. Make sure that you watch out for yourself. We love you. Just know that. It's all cast. All right. Current event number two. Gervonta, he is a boxer. Um, there's a video of him snatching his baby mama up while she was out at an, at an event in Miami. Y'all all know that right now. Another Super Bowl is game yeah, the Super Bowl. Game. Okay, and it's it's at the Super Bowl, so it was a Super Bowl charity game. Yes. So you know, and she's like she's like on social media. People know her from social media. So I'm thinking like her baby daddy didn't want her out because everybody noticing her. She might snack some niggas. I really don't know. But he snatched her up, and he took her right up at out, out that event. But the bad thing was he snatched her up by her throat. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was bodyguards yeah. around it when he by, did it. Like collar and everything. So yeah, it, it made a scene. It made enough of a scene to where if you, you can see in the crowd on the video that it made enough of a scene to where people were like, oh gosh, like wow, what the what's going on? Like you know, because if you get if you in the front row, mm-hmm. you get snatched up and taken out. Everybody like whoa going on here and i also read too in in the article that um that that they got a um argumentative like back and forth and they said it might have got physical i don't know how true that statement is but they said it might have got physical and even um in his response he said yeah i was aggressive and i told her come on he said that's the mother of my child i would never hurt her though he said he didn't hit her so I don't know how true so that my is, question is, is 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 something like that called for and like what are the other ways he can handle that um i'm gonna go first um i feel like a lot of us have heard boxers be really violent towards their women and i think it's because boxing is a way for them to relieve their stress a lot of men have different ways of relieving their stress some people like going to the shooting range some people like their job is the way they relieve their stress. They might go work more or something like that. I feel like boxers relieve their stress by hitting niggas in the mouth. So I feel like <laughs> a lot of times, like they, that's how they relieve their stress. Like they don't know other ways of conflict resolution. So I'm not saying that as an excuse. He's dead wrong. He should never put his hands on her. But I'm saying like we've always heard boxers do this. I think all boxers have been accused of putting their hands on a woman before. So it's definitely not called for, and I feel like other ways he could have handled it. I mean, he might have already said he didn't want her to go to the to wherever she was going to the charity game and set her ass in the house, but she didn't. So he came and got her. I don't know, but he could have told her like, "Don't go there," or he's Gervonta, like whoever the promoters is. He probably he could have blocked her from getting in. You know what I'm saying? There's other ways. If you if you're a celebrity like that, you can block people from getting into events and stuff like that. You don't necessarily have to put your hands on them. Yeah. So, what do you think, Steven? Uh, what I think is, I mean, he did do it very unnecessarily, you know, like, you gotta know, you in the place of, place of the public and you, you are a big name, I don't feel like you should respond that way to, you know, react that way to taking any woman out of a circumstance. It's unnecessary for whoever you are because it's like, it ain't that deep, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, all right. Let's go, you know, tell her, like, hey, we probably we probably should leave up out of here. Let's bounce, you know, like, you know, let's get up out of here. You ain't got to really snatch her up. The snatching her up part is, like, excess. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't know the backstory to it all, but I do know, like he said, he did say, um, like he like he was saying, he said, yeah, he was aggressive. Like, he admitted, like, he was aggressive, and he told her to come on. So, you, you don't really know what's going on, but I feel like, as black men, a lot of times, we don't know how to control our emotions. You feel me? So that was just a, a time where he was frustrated, and he might not have knew how to control his emotions. He might not have meant to, From the home of to, never to, ending to, to spaz never. on her like that, but he actually he actually did. But so it's like, eh, bro, you don't really need to be doing that. Yeah. It's out of order. There's other ways of communicating. Okay, Wayne. Uh, I don't think it was. I don't think it. Yeah. It was called for. You think there's another way he could have handled it? Mm mm. No. Nope. Really? Why? Cause she probably that type of person you gotta grab up. 
He wasn't gonna, she wasn't gonna probably just come willingly. So what type of person do you have to grab up? A defiant person. Hey, you got a point. Hmm. Mommy, what do you think? Well, I, I don't ever, you know, condone a man uh, putting his hands physically on a woman. That's not right at any point in time. And I feel like he could have handled it differently. And, um, you know, handled it whenever she came home. Obviously, they're a couple. They're going to see each other eventually. He needed to calm down before he addressed her. You don't address the woman when you're angry. And that's it. Okay. So, he needs to just take a step back instead of just reacting just, like, off the wall like he did. Yeah, because that initial reaction, people are going to judge you off of that. Regardless. Yeah, for if sure. If you meant it that way or not, mm-hmm. you're going to get judged off of it because they saw it. And when you're angry, you're going to react different. You know, you yeah. need to take time and calm down first and then address your situation. Always when you're angry, you're going to address it differently. So he had other men around him, probably like men in his entourage and stuff like that. Do you think that those other men should have stopped him? I think honestly, they, they probably to, ain't really like trying to stop Gervonta. But you they know were what still saying? trying He's to like, get him out of there. Knocked out. If you see on the video, they still try to get him out of there real fast. They well, of like, course, because you know people gonna start pulling out their phones and all that. So yeah. Right. So they did do a decent job of like just all right, get him out of here. I mean, he could have. They could have. He could have definitely just sent one of them niggas in there and been like, "Go get her," and you know what I'm saying? And been like, "You need to come out because Gervonta out here. He." Shitty. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just having going up in there and getting her yourself. Like I just feel like mama said he could if he would have calmed down, he could have approached it a whole totally different way. Like he had too many niggas for him to a big bodyguard could have went and got her and like, Come on, let's go. You know, you already you know what I'm saying, I don't we don't want all of this and whatever, but him just going in there and doing it himself with five dudes behind him, like I feel like they look kinda weak, like Y'all really let him grab her up? Like, that's not cool. I mean, you saying that. Yeah, but I don't know the situation. Good. But it's still but not. You, it's he not, pays it's them never going to be. You know what I'm saying? Facts. He pays them. That's true. You can't, you can't, you can't bite the hand that feeds you. That's if he true. wants to walk in there and he probably said, I'm about to go get her. They didn't think that he was going to snatch her up. Okay, yeah. yeah they like, like they all right. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. they, they little shot. They like, let's get up out of here real fast because. We don't want all this extra media attention out out this BS, and we like well, they probably know he heated or he could have just been heated. Didn't mean to yank her up like that just to try and grab her arm and ended up grabbing her collar. But I don't know, you feel what I'm saying? But like like Wayne said, some females are defiant, so we don't know. Like she could have been talking crazy to him. We don't know exactly what she said. And sometimes if you say the wrong thing to the to the wrong dude, I'm not saying it's right, but it it a cause a certain reaction like girl get your ass up you know what i'm saying like why you why are you even combative with me right mm-hmm. now just go ahead and get up you see me right here let's go and like i said he's he's paying them so they you feel me they, they like that was hey. a great point for sure so i think that we all like in agreement that he probably could have handled it a different way but i think wainers was he was probably in agreement with us but he was just like i mean she's probably the type of that don't listen you know what I'm saying? Because she's obviously there when he didn't want her there. I, that has to be the situation. Yeah, that, There's no way clear, that that's, that's not clear. the situation. That's For him to clear. get mad and go get her like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, another thing I was thinking was like, I don't like how men do that. Like, I feel like Geronte is everywhere. He be everywhere with females all the time. And she going to an event and he mad. You know what I'm saying? That's annoying. Like, she probably yeah. don't get to do nothing. Cause she his baby mama. He don't want nobody talking to her. He don't want nobody around her. But he can do all this extra stuff with all these females. That's annoying. I think that's the same thing like with Mayweather's. Well, I don't never see Mayweather's baby mama out nowhere. But I mean, he taking care, good care of her. I'm pretty sure she don't do nothing. I'm pretty sure she don't mess with nobody. But just be waiting on his beck and gall when whenever he's ready. Right. So I think I just think that's like. That just annoyed me a little bit. But I think y'all and all, we all on the same page. You could have handled that way better. All right, next current event. Um, Trump has expanded his travel ban to Nigeria. Um, the ban doesn't affect tourism, business, and student travel. 
it's more so of a hassle to regular travelers from to and from Nigeria. So like people who had who need to come here and see their families, anything outside of a student business traveling. You know what I'm saying? That's what the travel ban, you know what I'm saying, is targeting. So um I wanted to add in here that Nigerian immigrants in the U.S. are considered one of the most successful and educated immigrant groups in immigrant immigrant groups in the country. Sorry, guys. They definitely are. Is Trump trying to distract us during Black History Month because he has a lot of other things coming on? Actually, what another thing that happened was like Trump. He got um another somebody else um said that he had raped them or something and she wanted to get a DNA test done on Trump so that she can prove that he did that. So I think he's tr- maybe trying to distract everybody from the stuff that's going on. Of course, impeachment trial is going on and everything. So, you know I mean, he just, he just expanded the travel ban. So I feel like he, my opinion, he's probably trying to distract us, you know what I'm saying, from everything that his ass got going on. What do y'all think about the travel ban? I don't know nothing about it actually, but I, distraction he could, it could be true. Yeah, right. but he it's from Nigeria, one so Nigeria is an African country, so he's not restricted business, he's not restricted student travel, he's just restricting like regular people traveling back and forth. So I feel like he kind of targeting, you know, what I'm saying black people mm-hmm. in Nigeria, like the the people over there, they was just like we don't really care about coming to the U S. or not, like you know how Africans are, like. We don't care. We like it in our country anyways. You know right. what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it's your family. Some of your family's over here, so don't you want to come and see them? I get that you like, fuck the U.S. I don't care about them anyways. But at the end of the day, that's he's he's that just seems like a little racist to me. I don't know. I, to be honest, I don't feel like he's trying to throw. I don't feel like he's trying to throw no distraction. He's just being himself. Okay. He's been doing this. He been saying he was gonna target the immigrants. Why we think it's different? Because it's in a different country now. He don't give a damn. He don't care about if it's Nigeria. If it's he he kept business relations. He's a businessman. Yeah. So he kept business relations positive. Yeah. He like all the rest of y'all. All the rest of you immigrants. You feel what I'm saying? He's doing it to other countries with Mexico too. He's trying to build a wall and and stuff like that. So it's I wouldn't be surprised. You know, but it also is too. A distraction for the other things he got going on because it's like boom, let me throw you Dude, throw this in black your face. History, huh? Yeah, let me throw this in your face. Like you know, you know, it's like look, look at my hand is winding up, but boom, I'm about to hit you with the punch. You know what I'm saying? So he threw a couple little little jabs out there while he winding his hand up because that's the, all the BS is going on in the background that people negate to realize because they're like, oh, this is happening, that's happening. Oh, I'm against that, and oh my God, Trump this is like, wait a minute, he still got allegations against him. Two allegations now, you know what I'm saying, in the impeachment process and, like you said, the, the 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 rape case that he had going on. So it's like, you know, it could be, it could, it could also be a distraction. It could also be him like, shit, I'm going to just keep doing what I'm doing just in case I do go out of here. I'm going to still put my stamp on, stamp on the presidency while I was in here. Okay. Dwayne, what do you think? I got you my first one. Oh, you yeah. already said? Yeah. Okay, yeah. mommy. Do you think it's a distraction or like what do you think about the travel ban all together now that you heard about it? Well, I definitely think, you know, kind of basically what Steven said is Donald Trump is being Donald Trump. You know what I'm saying? That's just him. That's how he is and that's how he's going to continue to be. And the fact that he's doing the travel ban for Nigeria, like like Steven said, he's just being Donald Trump. He's a racist. That's mm-hmm. what he is, you know. And he probably is trying to get some of that heat off of him for for those allegations against him. And I believe he'll do whatever because that's serious. That's a very serious allegation. So he probably is trying to, you know, steer us in a different direction and take our focus off of that, you know. But at the end of the day. And he's Donald Trump, and he's going to continue to be him. No, doesn't matter what nobody say or do. Okay. All right, so I think the consensus is um, this is just who he is. It's not necessarily a distraction or anything, but I feel like this is a distraction only because he does this. Like, he only does stuff like this when it's heat on him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He only does crazy stuff like this when he's when it's heat on him. Like, when, like, 
uh, at the beginning of his when he was making money when everybody was finding out that he was making up money off his presidency which you cannot do which is illegal um he was like that's when he started doing the travel ban for the muslims and stuff like that i just feel like he'd be trying to distract people and he knows he uh, he was a, like a celebrity so he understand that people's attention span is getting shorter and shorter so yeah. he knows once y'all own something yeah. if you got something else then you ain't gonna be thinking about the last thing you're gonna think about this then you're gonna you know what I'm saying? Like so what? Yeah. So what? I feel like the Democrats need to start doing is y'all need to have ten things about his ass lined up. So when he tries to change the script, you can put that in, and then once he tries to change the script about that, you can add something in because he really be winning because the Democrats don't be ready for something else after he puts you know after he distracts right. yeah. the goopies. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The Democrats don't be ready to. To the re the strike is our re, you know what I'm saying? They have, yeah, like, they really don't. He's a good counterpuncher. He's For definitely sure. a good political counterpuncher when it comes to the base, and when it comes to just like like we said, like like his his political his political stance and political being, he's a good counterpuncher because he hits you with that. Oh, this yeah. is going on, but bam, wait a minute, I'm gonna throw some sauce at you. Like, wait a minute, oh gosh, it's throw a little turmoil you right. there. Yeah, so I'm like, I, I mean, I agree with y'all as well, because I mean, but you do have a it's like the 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 thing that he did is not unlike him, you know what I'm saying? But right. it's definitely like he trying to take our mind off of something else. But that's definitely him. Like he's if he's want to do something, it's gonna be that. But the fact that he did it on he did it on uh on Black History Month, this is the thing. Like people like you, Stephen and Mama are like. Well, that's just who he is. So it's damn near he damn near didn't distract people like he thought he would. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people like y'all thinking like shit. He gonna do that regardless. It's Black History Month. He trying to do be himself. We still know you. You know you damn near about to get impeached. We still know that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so for an update for impeachment, they're going through trial. This is like off topic, but he, they're going through I mean, the impeachment. Oh, I guess it is. They're going through the impeachment trial right now and. They're trying to um, summon witnesses that support that Trump did commit, you know, all the all the fraud and all break all the laws that he did. But the uh, Republicans are trying not to let the witnesses speak, but the Democrats are trying to get them to speak. So if the witnesses speak and the witnesses like it's five witnesses that say he did it and then the Republicans still vote that he didn't, then we then the Republicans are probably not going to get votes from voters after that because they they're not first of all they're committing perjury because they're lying under oath because all of them take an oath to say that if the president breaks a law they have to convict them of you know they have to impeach him so if witnesses say he did and the evidence say he did then there's no way that they can say that he didn't you Mm -hmm. know what i'm saying without losing their seat so they are trying so hard not to get him to i mean not to get them witnesses on the stand and that's what's, what's going on right now. So they're doing their best to not. They're like, we don't need witnesses. This is you guys are taking this too far. This is just going too far. They're just trying to save themselves and save Trump at the same time. So that's what's going on with the impeachment trial. So that you guys know, we can move on. So I believe it's this week. The police locked all set up, and he got out. Supposedly, they said it was a mistaken identity. And they thought he was somebody else who had committed a crime. So they locked him up. Um, and he walked out. And he was just like, I, he was like, everything's cool. They mistaken my identity, blah, blah, blah. Um, do y'all believe that the police mistaken his identity? What do y'all believe, like, that the police was doing? Mistaken his identity? Wayne? I mean. Oh, Steven. Go ahead, Wayne. That do happen. It happen all the time. But being that he's a high profile artist and celebrity, right? Mm, they could have checked him right there and there and see if he had a handgun on him. Yeah, like how do you how do you mistake Offset's identity for somebody else? Like, I mean, it, I mean, I guess you could. He looks like a regular dude. I do agree with Wayne, but also we gotta think like it's coming from our perspective, so we would know. Like, it's people out there that really don't know nothing about the hip-hop industry. So, to to them, they were profiling because, I believe they were profiling because based off about, based off of his appearance, oh, he could have been a suspect. You know what I'm saying? So, that was racial profiling. Like, it, it ain't like he couldn't have got a mistaken identity. Identity. They're like, okay, he got dreads. 
and he's black and he's black and he was like he got he's little money. six feet tall right he's six feet tall <laughs> so he could have did something yeah he, he looked like he's from a he looked like he's from an urban urban residential area so he could have did something bad so maybe if we get him we might get him on something so you know what i'm saying it's like it could have been a mistaken identity but they would erase your profile in either way yeah for sure Mama, what do you think? Do you think they really like mistaking his identity for somebody else? Well, once again, I do agree with what Steven said because um, some he he does look like you know your average black guy. So <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not always gonna be against the police. I really think this time that they absolutely made a mistake. I don't really feel like they knew who he was. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that um. It was an honest mistake on their part because, like you said, a lot of us were dreads now. A lot of you know us were dreads, and I've actually mistaken somebody like from behind and um, like in the store or something. And I thought it was somebody. It was somebody else. So that's absolutely possible, you know. And I don't want to always think the worst of the police, you know. Even though we don't have a good relationship with them as a black community, this time. I just think it was a simple mistake. I really do. Yeah, because um, he he was in jail and he got right out. But like I said, I don't I don't believe for one second that y'all mistaken Offset's identity. <laughs> Offset had on all this jury. He had an entourage and all and now all everybody every black nigga walking on the street. This is the one who committed some type of crime with all these with this bodyguard or with this person. You know what I'm saying with this nice car. This is the one. Who who committed the crime? Like, I mean, are you crazy? Times, they do like to. Hey, a lot of times like, they, they just like they to harass like to rappers. About, That's yeah, the thing. They like to and, harass rappers because they yeah. have so much influence. Yeah, and they kids be liking them rappers too. Sometimes, and they be just hating on them, hating on they see love, you know. I don't like that. Like. Y'all not finna just be mistaking people's identities. Like, what the fuck? That's all of it. Like, like I said, that's to like, like Mama and you said to us. That's all said. Like, how can you not? But like, he is. He do him and all the Migos look like regular dudes at the end of the day. But Offset dresses a certain way. He has a certain people around him. Like at the end of the day, white people know Cardi B. Like they know Cardi B's husband is Offset. Like, yeah. y'all really tried it. Like, but he, like I said, he got in and got. It. I think they let him out quickly because he damn near can sue them for doing that you know what i'm saying because oh, yeah. it was on camera yeah. yeah they was like really harassing him too like man, making him go up against the wall and all that stuff but i think this shows at all black people and people period that it don't matter how much money that you have and i think that shows us something with kobe as well like it don't matter what type of money you got like the the world the universe is still gonna do what it's gonna do like you're still going to get harassed by the police. You still might get in a freak accident. Like yeah. it does not matter. Yeah. Like at all. Like <laughs> it doesn't matter. So I think that's what we need to take from that. All right. Next topic. Um. So since since Kobe's death, people are starting to sell his gear for millions of dollars. Even Nike has sold out of all of his um, merchandise. Um, do you think it's a bad thing for people to be selling Kobe's gear for millions of dollars? Or, because a lot of people are saying, like, that's bad because they making money off someone's death and stuff like that. So, so what do you, you guys think? think? What do you think, Mama? Do you think it's a bad thing for people? Well, I, I don't think anyone should profit off of somebody else's death. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's a good thing, but... At the end of the day, everybody is looking for a come up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Always looking for a come up. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to use whatever they can. You know, if you can get uh, thousands of dollars off of Kobe, he, they feel probably like that he's gone. You know, so what harm is it going to do him? He's not even here mm-hmm. anymore. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, everybody's looking for a get rich quick. So yeah. I understand it, but that doesn't make it right. But I do understand because everybody, you know, is looking for that money. I always want some money. I always want to come up, you know, and they'll kind of do it where however they can. Mm-hmm. And if they feel like this is the way they can do it, you know, if they can get a hundred thousand dollars off of something that Kobe right. has, they're gonna do that. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. do that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you better stop trying to profit off of Kobe. 
Wayne, what you think? You think it's a bad yeah. thing for people trying to I think it's cool. Go on, get your money. Just don't make it uh, like a joke. Uh, don't joke about it. Um, but I do think it's a little too soon. Right. Okay, right. okay. So not like a week after. Yeah. yeah. Nah, it's like, that was almost like, like that was only a gold one. mine. That was almost yeah. like, like, marketing like just it was almost like yeah so like that was a good time to do it if they was gonna do yeah. it at that time okay yeah. when it was when the death was fresh um i don't know like this one is like i'm on both mm-hmm. sides like i don't know like if it's okay like like mama said he they probably think he ain't here so like what harm is it gonna do but so i mean like i think people. i think like what wayne said really really made me like okay that makes sense because I feel like if you can, what you said, but then again, what you said about the marketing makes sense as well. Like, it might not even be worth that much once it starts to die down. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's going to be worth a lot. Like you were saying, like, when it's, like, fresh and, like, you yeah. know, everybody's yeah, everybody sad mind. and yeah. their feelings are so tied to the the things that you're selling because Kobe had something to do with it. Some people have been, like, like collectors, like Kobe collectors and mm-hmm. just just collectors period and from different jerseys he got so yeah they could use this as a marketing yeah what you think do you already say what you got nah okay. I feel like um when 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 a person has a certain status in in the community such as celebrity and um things like that there's always profit in their in their in their death, mm-hmm. like Nipsey, they created a a, a what Adidas or a Puma was it Puma, Puma clothing line off of that. Yeah, didn't sell. I think he had al- he had already was he right, already he was, was creating one anyway. Right, he they just released was, it. Right, he has already created one, but he released it so his family gets that money off of them releasing that, and it's going and it's going to profit more because after he died, more people wanted to buy it, so it boom, it was just going kind of, marketing. Right immediately sell out. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody wanted that because of mm-hmm. the name behind it. And then it's like, okay, so more people gonna want it because he passed. So they want... And that's so how it wanna, always is. It's yeah. always that way. Yeah. 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 Okay. Then especially with somebody like Kobe. Like, that yeah, was definitely... Like, people had more tie... Was tied to, to Kobe as, you know, people looked at him as role models. I mean, I mean looked at him as a role model and, you know, people... Kobe fans and I want I want I want some memorabilia type mm-hmm. of thing. So yeah, I agree and I feel like um, a lot of people who talking crazy about it, it. They don't got no Kobe stuff to sell. If you had some Kobe stuff to sell, you be selling it. So stop, right? It's please. Just, it's just the fact that it was so soon, so people like and people's emotions. Yeah, people, people still, still, still emotional, emotional about it. Yeah. Like, but if you had some that, that Kobe signed or anything like that, you would be trying to sell it as well. So I hate when people try to say like they just way morally, you know, better and than everybody else, and that's just not the case. Cause like I said, if you yeah, had it, I mean, you would sell it. Are you would keep it, and then you might think about selling it, even if you didn't. You'd be like, should I? Nah, I just want this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It'd be more important of an item. I would look at it as it'd be more. That's more important to me that he signed something, and now he can't even sign nothing else. At least I got something that he signed. You know? Yeah. So, um, next topic. Um, so we want to say congratulations to Sierra and Russell Wilson. They are expecting their third baby. Yes, and my question to you guys is, yes, how many kids do you all want? I'm so, good with none. <laughs> oh, he, well, you don't he, want none ever? Go. I ain't say I don't want none, but I'm good with none. How many would... Oh, so you don't care, nope. basically. You don't want none. What's, the, what's the most? Some, how many? If I got that bag on me, 10. 10? Yeah. Dang, Wayne. Mom, did you hear Wayne? What he say? He said 10. <laughs> he want 10 kids? He said, he said if he, he has that bag, 10. I love it. That's a team. I love it. Two teams. Steven. I, I don't want 10, baby. I want about <laughs> three or four of them babies, though. I like, yeah. you know, three or four. I feel like four is a good number. Mommy, you got to have four grandkids with Steven. How many did you want, mommy? I think I already know the thing. I wanted four. You well, wanted four, and I wanted four. How many do you want? Oh, she ain't. As many as possible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I want as many grandkids as I can get. 
Um, I think that that the most I would do is three. (laughs) And that's only if I don't have twins. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I understand the value and the significance of a sibling. Like, I feel like some, and that's the only reason, because I always said I wanted one until I started to think about it. Like, a, a lot of people are only childs are different type of people. You know what I'm saying? Only child don't be different. They be different they type of different. people. They don't be like, they they be different. Like, I like I like the people with siblings because they, they, they got a lot of people to talk to. Sometimes... People who are like an only child, they keep everything inside and they don't want to talk about stuff and all that stuff. Yeah, they communication. But, yeah, they communication different. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got nobody to talk to and play with and stuff like that. So they be a little weird. They be a little. More standing. They reserved. In reserve. Yeah, like Not I don't want my them, kids to be like. Some of them definitely are. Like yeah. I don't. I mean, I'm I'm not that friendly to everybody that I meet. But at the end of the day, like somebody says something to me, I'm going to say something back. So. I, that's the reason why I started thinking about I probably need more than one. So at the most, I wanted to say three, but I would probably do two to three. Mm-hmm. But I have to do two. Like, but I feel like, but I, I like if something happens to, I always think like something. Ha- God forbid something happens to one of my kids, right. but if something did, they would have the other one. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, mommy, what are you about to say? Well, I was gonna say that um, now that I'm older. You know, my young self thought, oh, my God, two kids, four kids, that's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But now that I'm older, and today is my birthday, so I am older, one year. <laughs> anyway, so I would I would have had more. I really would have. Really? Had, yes, I would have had wow. more children. I love my four, but Mama, my you, young me was like. You was too busy when you were young. Oh, that's enough. That's a lot, but. My older me is I would have had more. I would have had more than four. I really would have. So if the clock didn't stop, you would still go. Absolutely. Oh my God! But wow, Mama, yeah, that's absolutely. but that's you probably like when you start feeling like that after your you know what I'm saying after that time is over with, then that's where the grandkids come in. You know, because yeah. since that's where they come in. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. It's right. like you got you gotta stop at some point and then you start having the grandkids and then you have so many that you're like, Okay, I don't know if I can keep up with all them. You think you'll be able to keep up with all your grandkids? Well You got three girls. So. Let me reiterate what right, you were you saying. Let me reiterate what boy. you were saying before and which is um, <laughs> okay, like now yeah. I wouldn't have any more children. Right. But I'm just saying my younger self, you know, if I had the brain that I have now, I would have had six. You know what I'm saying? I would have had more. But right now, at my age, absolutely not. I wouldn't want another kid. Even <laughs> if it was possible, I wouldn't want to have a kid. So that's why I okay. told y'all, have me many grandkids as you can. And yes, I'm going to be able to keep up with them. The waiter's going to have 10. Oh, so. uh, well, waiter, come on. You know, auntie got them. <laughs> Bring them on, auntie, honey. When they come, I'm right here. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, like I said, two to three. But I really want twins as well. So hopefully I whoever I'm anymore. with is a twin. That'd be nice. Why would you say something like that? Because the way the way that in our family that it works, it's always it's like kids. the second oldest. Yeah. It's always like the second oldest, right? And I'm the second oldest. No, I'm no, I'm for real. <laughs> no, that's that's no, that's <laughs> normally how it is in our family. It's the same well, I would have a, I would have a a bigger chance of getting. Yeah. Mama had twins though. I would have a bigger. Mama's the second oldest. I would have a better chance of getting twins because Mama has that gene. If so, if the dude that I'm with has that gene as well, so if he's a twin and my mom has that gene, then it's more so like you know it's a better, it's right, a better right, uh, right. outcome. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> True. Yeah. True. And twins do run in our family. Um, I have like three cousins. That have twins, so yeah, I could possibly have them. You know, and right, and be my, great. And my I, woman is a twin too. I love having so, two at a time. Mommy, hear me? You know, and, and <laughs> it was a so twin. Fun. So yeah, who he's with is a twin. But there's no guarantee you're gonna stay with Greg. You might go with somebody else and have a child. So, but she is a twin. Ah, uh, that's that's, that's a whole other topic. Right, that's but yeah. <laughs> Um, like I said, mommy, you, I mean, okay, you already said you don't care how many grandkids you have. It doesn't matter. The more the merrier. Like I said, you got three girls, so it's like, you're going to guaranteed have 
to deal with the kids. I uh, actually, you know what I'm saying? Boys it's a, produce more children. No, but I'm saying like it's different. Like girls have to have the babies all the time. Oh, Men don't necessarily yeah. have to have them all the time. That's true. Like they need their mama to live. Yes, they first year of life. So, like. Yeah, that's true. You're going to have to deal with kids regardless. So be be careful with your wish for. Exactly. Well, I'm ready. I she mean, for you and Steven, you know, the twins later on. But um, I think that, like, me and my mom were talking about this the other day. Like, I really had, like, I really enjoyed when my mom had the twins. It was super, it was super fun. I don't think it was ever a bad time with my little sisters. Um, and I think she said, like, she said it was because their dad helped out a lot so that's something that i think about as well like when you choose the spouse that you're supposed to be with like have kids with you got to make sure that they don't be 10 toes down so that it'd be enjoyable experience because now if i think about people who don't have an enjoyable experience you know what i'm saying opposed to people who do with kids and it's because they have a little bit more help and i won't say mama had like help from like I feel like it was just her and Martin, really. I don't that's really it. feel like you didn't have nobody watching the twins like that, so. That's it. That's how it was. Your dad and I. So, that's really, it. like, that shows to me in my life, I don't know about everybody else's life, but two parents that are actually, like, involved in stuff, it could be an enjoyable experience rather than having two parents that are not. Because I always, Steven's best friend has a has a daughter, and I always talk to him, like, how do you feel? And, like, is it hard? He's like, no, nah, it's not hard. It's. It's cool. It ain't even that difficult. Like, but he, him and his his uh, the baby mother, they're both cool. Like, and they both you know raise the child together. So that right, probably so does make it enjoyable. So I was thinking about that too. Like yeah. So Stephen, you said four. Yeah. It's, about what about five. six? Um, I don't know about that. <laughs> so it gotta be four. Okay. Hey, are you gonna wait till you're married? Does that matter if you're married or not? Uh, it wouldn't matter to me, but it depends on the woman. Yeah. Sometimes it matters to the woman. So. Well, it matters to me. I want you to have a wife first. Why? Why is that important to be married? Because you don't want a child a wedlock. Why? I mean, I I will take them however we get, but I, <laughs> but that is the way that I would rather for him to do it. Because if you have a wife, then you she's more susceptible to be there, and you guys are more inclined to work together mm-hmm. as a as a family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's more um you guys will stay together and you'll help each other. If you're not married, you know, one of you might stray go another way or but something. But you wasn't married like, either times and both of your your child's father has helped you. So Yeah, I know, but that was back then. Times are different, you know, and that it's was not in two thousand and four. Yeah, and it's that still like, and that's sixteen what, years ago. <laughs> and it was very different. It was very different then. A decade and a half ago. True. And um, and then you also, you know, you have to pick the a right person because I think that's pick. I think that's it, Mom. I don't think it's necessarily marriage. I think, but marriage comes with a security blanket, it though. Does. Right, the for that sure. Because if you marry a person, then you're definitely choosing a life spouse. So that's coming with picking. Person, you and know, then you, you, you guys are choosing a, to have a family together. This is a choice that you guys are making together, you know. So you're going both going to be in it 100% mm-hmm. because this is something you're choosing to do together. If your boyfriend and girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? It could have happened, an accident, and maybe one person is not so into it and the other one is. But when you're married, both of you are in it. This is the decision y'all made together, and y'all going to both take the responsibility okay i get that but like mom like well if you're in a marriage and the husband didn't want to have kids or the wife didn't want to have kids and they got pregnant and they i mean i guess y'all still gonna raise the baby right but, but i feel like likely right? i feel but i feel like going in honestly i feel like going into it with a i feel like going into it as a loving couple as well helps like at at a time where you where your baby dad in you love or as a woman love each other a lot i feel like that's a good time to have kids as well because both parties are going to do what they can to help the kid and they're going to love the kid wholly i feel like when there's a problem with some i mean some people are mature enough to get over the fact that they don't really like the other person but some people aren't like i don't like that person and i don't want to be around you or the kid i didn't want the kid anyway you know what i'm saying i feel like that's important as well like 
if you <laughs> if you thinking about having a kid, like, does the other person want to have a kid with you? Because sometimes they don't, and that causes issues as well. Do you want to cat? Do you want to have a kid? Do you want? Does do they want to? You know All what I'm right. saying? Are you? And I sometimes I feel like it don't even. I used to think like financial things were an issue as well. Of course they're gonna play a part, but I feel like if both of the people are willing to do the work, then it could have it could make it a little bit better. So, so Wayne ten, Stephen four, me three, two or three. Two, two, three. I don't know, because that childbirth really scares me. <laughs> Mama, how, was childbirth really really terrible for you? Uh, I, I have to be true. Because you had two big head kids. It was, it was very uh, much traumatizing. Uh, through the, <laughs> through it the was, natural It way. was very traumatic. All right. <laughs> oh, God. I don't want to do it. I'm scared. <laughs> All right, all right. Last topic, you guys. All right, Terry Crews posted that. No, no, no. What? You forgot about Fifty Cent. Oh shoot! Sorry about that. We got two more. Sorry. Congratulations to Fifty Cent for getting a star on the Walk of Fame. Do you guys think he deserves it? And if he does, what does he deserve it for? Duh, he deserves it. Why? I believe he deserves it. Everybody think about if you say no, you think about his trouble. But Fifty Cent actually put in their work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He made he made his um stamp on the music industry. He has been in, you know, a few movies. I mean, he in inside of the industry he puts work in, you know what I'm saying? He made a you know, wasn't he like the co producer or the producer or something like that as a He power? Yeah. He's the creator of power. Creator. He's the creator of power. Yeah. One of the the most you know what I'm saying goddamn shows <laughs> out there yes to, to, to touch the market He's, so, he signs those checks right so he definitely is a mogul he did his thing didn't he sell uh what is it vitamin water bro he yes that, yes that, he did that, that. he did yeah, yes so i feel like yes yeah, he put his work in so give him that star. y'all be forgetting about that vitamin give him that star that bro give him that star so you think it's for his overall um overall. work Wayne, yep. do you think he deserves a walk of a star in Walk of Fame? Yep. Why? For G Unit. G Unit. G Unit only. And the game. G Unit and Get Rich Dot Tron. Not power. Power too though. Nah, Get Rich Dot Tron is harder to Oh come. my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not necessarily like I think that he deserves That was it. his outbreak. Like, yeah, it was. Yeah, that, yeah. But I I don't think he deserves one because of music, personally. Because I feel like I he, he deserves one because he's an entrepreneur. Yeah, he is. I feel like he. All of that stuff in general. He cool. is a superstar. You know what I'm saying? So and I think power is really took what took him to the next level. The number count. The household name. The what? The stats. The numbers. Yeah. 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 Grammys. Does he get Grammys? He gets all that. We just don't watch it. <laughs> 50 cent one Grammys 50 cent one Grammys that's how you get a, a, a star now uh, you can get the star from a whole bunch of different stuff yeah, I you, can be a, you can get a star without getting a Grammy cause like people like movie stars get, they get stars and they don't win Grammys Grammys are just for music Grammys I think not 50 cents at- Grammys not for music Yes, they are. No, it's not. I didn't see somebody win a movies Grammy Award. I was seeing somebody. It's Academy win. Award. Yeah. That's the that's movies. Uh, Grammys uh, is only music only. Oh, you're yeah. saying Academy Award? Yeah. He might have he? Man, yeah, he getting all See, that. I don't even know if he uh, he won uh, that before. Maybe he has. He has. But he probably has actually. I don't mm-hmm. actually follow him that well. He should have been. Him, so I he should be going for it. You got. Like you guys, when you get an Emmy, a Grammy, I think I forgot what the mm-hmm. old one is. I never got the, but anyways, it's four different awards. But anyways, um, yeah, like I feel like he doesn't deserve it for his music because a lot of people who had a CD that was top that don't have a walk a star on the Walk of Fame, even though that is a very hard thing to do is okay. get a CD on top and develop a whole lot of artists. You know what I'm saying? Make them superstars as well. Um, Power definitely took him to the next level. He has another uh, show coming out. Um, it's about a man who got falsely accused and had to go to prison for life. So he got that coming out. 
Um, Fifty Cent is an author. He's been he started like before Power came. He was an author, so that's why he even got Power. Um, like Stevie said, vitamin water. So that man has been doing work, and he is a superstar. We all know him. So that's normally what people do when they're when they get a star on the Walk of Fame. So yeah, I agree. I'm um, did you get get to say? Well, I did. I said I don't know. I don't follow Fifty Cent. Okay. And I don't know a whole lot about him, so okay. I really can't comment. Okay. But they they did say it do say uh in 2009 that he did win a a Grammy for uh best rap performance by a duo art group for Crack the Bottle. What is Crack the Bottle? Crack a bottle. What is Crack the Bottle? I've never heard of that, but okay then. Okay now. <laughs> <laughs> But you like I I was happy when uh Juicy J got a uh Grammy for for his hard aim for a pill. <laughs> I mean, I believe that's what changed it all. When that happened, I was oh, like, wow. okay. We're really I remember like, when that happened, he was like, Wow. Well, we're, we're really in a new millennium now. Okay, so so it was Eminem's song, but it featured Dr. Dre and fifty cent. Oh, okay. And that's what it was. All right. So yeah, like congratulations to him. I think that I know that Dr. Dre and Eminem was at the ceremony, so that's wonderful. Fifty Cent, we all know. Everybody knows you deserve that. Um, the last topic we got is Terry Crews. So he posted that he only cares about what his wife thinks of him and not any other woman on earth, mother included. Do you think that a wife should be number one in a man's life? Mommy, <laughs> do you think that? Well, over all other women, daughters, mothers, everything. I have a son, so <laughs> let me say this. No, no. <laughs> Mom should come first, and then the wife. You should always care about what your mom thinks, but. Yeah, you should care about. That don't mean you shouldn't care about what she thinks, but whatever the wife says is that. Is that the end all be all? No, it's whatever your mom says. Okay. Is the end all be all. Whatever your mom says, it's not whatever the wife says. <laughs> For the rest you of know? your life? Absolutely. What? So like let's she say you were what? in a relationship with somebody and you're married to him and his his mom is like, I don't want the kids going to that school, you like I want them to go. But but you're saying that the mom with the mom thinks should go over what? you think and that's not necessarily true mom yes it is because moms know best we just do we do know sure. we know best but what if what if the mom has a certain like she feels some type of way towards the girl right because moms don't always like the spouse yeah so but that 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 might be the case but it still doesn't change the fact so mother should be that first. mothers know best and we know best for our children we know best for our grandchildren what we feel about the lady is really not a factor. What we feel about our grandkids is something different. We feel, we got a special place for them. We got a special place for our children. So whatever the mom says is correct. Steven, go ahead. I'm gonna let my mom keep the microphone so Stevie can say what he gotta say. Because you might need. <laughs> Steve, yeah, what do you think? Need, you think okay? So you agree, with Mama? The the mother uh, I say, should be first. Uh no. When, okay. When you get married, your spouse, your 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 wife has to be first. Mm -hmm. She has to come first. You live with her. Y'all in a joint union. Y'all one now. Your mother's comment matters, but end up be all is your wife, because at the end of the day, that's who you coming home to. That's who you living with. Mm -hmm. So y'all made that bond to be one. So what if your mom lives with you guys? If your mom lives, <laughs> if your mom lives same with thing. you guys, it's the same thing. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> You have to listen to your wife because then that's gonna become an issue. That's right? gonna definitely become an issue you, if, quick. If you so you gotta set the standard like when yeah. she moves in, like mom, like whatever she say, go to her house at the end of the day. I just right. think that's a myth. No, <laughs> what? I, I think that's a myth. It ain't a myth. That's the truth. I don't feel like people, that's the truth. I feel like that's just married, something they... somebody's always said, and so that's what the world wants to believe. But it's not the truth. I feel like the mother's <laughs> comment matters, but the wife. That you gotta you gotta go with the wife at the end of the day. Well, we can um, you agree to disagree. Agree to right. disagree. Well, what do you well, think? You think your wife's your wife and how she feels should trump every other woman in your life and how they feel? What do you think? Um, 
I think it should go. My wife. <laughs> huh? Hold on. <laughs> so I think it here. should go. Yeah, it should go. It should go my wife, then God, then my mama, then everybody else. Okay. So, okay. So she's definitely next. She's after. Your mom's after. But her opinion don't trump everything, though. Like, she just got an opinion. Okay. That's what you said, Steven. Yeah, same like, thing. I'm going to still hear it from the other side, too. Right. Yeah, yeah it matters. Wait, whose opinion don't said. trump everything? My wife. Oh, trump it, it, it don't trump everything? Trump everything? No. Okay. No, I think you're saying, like, you're going to make the final decision. Is that what I'm you're saying? saying? I yeah. mean, yeah, but I'm going to hear what she got. <laughs> it could be her decision, though. I'm saying, like, her, her, like, let's say your mom wants you to do one thing and your wife wants you to do one thing. Who are you going to go with? I'm going to hear both day sides. I'm going to try to. Put okay. A mixture together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So explain it. It depends together. on yeah. the situation. I mean, but I'm gonna try. I mean, true. And then yeah. I'm gonna when you, okay. When you, when you throwing circumstances and situations, I'm talking about overall. <laughs> I'm saying overall. Not me. I'm just tell you, right now, anytime, <laughs> all day, every day, it's gonna be up in the air for both of y'all. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so like my opinion is <laughs> I definitely think that the wife's opinion should come before the mother's. Like I like <laughs> I really wish like that I would get married to it again and he was his mama would say like something and then he'd be like, We gonna go with what my mom said. I'm be like, No, we're not. No, we're not. We're gonna go with what I said because this is my house and this is what we're gonna do. Your mom and what she has to say is cool and everything, but that ain't that ain't how we run in the house. His mom is right. She might be right, but my opinion is going to trump hers because my decision is always going to trump hers because this is my family at the end of the day. Yeah, this is your son, but I, me and him created a new family together, and whatever decision had to be made about this family needs to be made between me and him, not you. Like, yeah, you can have your opinion, but you're not going to, like, nothing that you say is going to be concrete. And you ain't finna be weighing the options either. You ain't gonna be like, well, mom said what you gotta say it. Wife said what you gotta say it. Let's see what I, let's, let me see what I come up Everybody with. I'm like, no. A- what I said is what we gonna do. And that's so how it's gonna do. That's so unfair. That's down. just so unfair. That's it all unfair. Come, it comes down to knowing your personnel as well. Because clearly, Look at what- you see you see how you see how Ariel is. She's coming a total different way. I'm like. She's like, I better be the NRB, y'all. It, I am the NRB, you know, y'all. Oh, it's kills. It's not. I'm not Us. going to. We're not going to be listening to everything your mama say all the time. Like, you got to grow up. You should, though. But mama, you got common sense. A lot of people don't. A lot of people, mama, think they perspective. smart, but they really don't be that smart. You it's always just gonna go with no. Your personnel. No, like you know what I'm saying? Know your like, the best no. decision based off of uh. Yeah, I have a problem with that, feel? anyways, because I'll be thinking like, what do you mm-hmm. like? Why is her opinion even different from mine's, anyways? Like my opinion's right, anyways. <laughs> so if she's conflicting with that, mm-hmm. then she's something's wrong with her. And she needs to deal with that, but we don't have to deal with that at home. Like she can deal with that on her own. So I just don't know. Like I like I said, this is this is where I get like I don't really get in trouble with this with mama's boys because at the end of the day, like like I said, I like mom's boys, but a lot of times their mothers have the same opinions of, like that I do because I'm a real I'm a person who make like I don't make um calls without trying to like research and understand what's going on first. So then I'll say I'll make a decision. So nine times out of ten, they mama have the same. They have the same thought that I do anyway. So I really don't have those problems like that. But if there was, we definitely need to understand that what I say is going to go in my house, like not your mom. And that's that would be a problem for me. <laughs> well, we we all we got all different got different opinions, opinions on that. That's like four different opinions. Yeah, that's definitely four different. Opinions. That's crazy. But honestly, just to keep it 100, like the most thoughtful <laughs> opinions probably Wayne's like, hey, I'm going to listen to you, right, mom. Right. I love you. And I love you. I'm just going to weigh a decision right, now. I love you, wife. I love you, mama. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make this decision. Mama, awesome. like, you saying that she, if, if your son gets married to somebody, you honestly think that your opinion is should trump hers in their house? Right. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> so you're okay with your... 
your husband's mother's opinion trumping yours? Right. No. Exactly. Look, look, look. <laughs> like, it with the twins, the twins, his grandmother was like, I don't like this school for the twins, and you really want to send them there? No, he, they're not going there. Well, I will listen to her because she's probably right. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. she's she, she yeah. seasoned oh, and she, she probably <laughs> the knows the twins are more like she's me, lying. And I would right. definitely try it. <laughs> I would try it out. I would definitely listen to his mom because she's, uh, you know, she's knowledgeable. She's older and she has but something to add. His I would mom is listen. like the you twins is dad. The twins is grandmother is like really like smart and stuff like that. So I can see why she would listen to her, but. So, you would listen to her for real. Absolutely. Mommy, you was dead set on the school that the twins, that you want the twins go to. And if that grandmother's like, no, not that school, you've been like, okay, that's fine. I'm going to try to send them somewhere else. I would send them where she wanted to go because I believe <laughs> Mommy, she that she's knowledgeable and she knows. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I think Whole different knows. opinions on that. Right. Lord Jesus. So that wraps up that part of the podcast. Now we're going to go around and talk about how everybody's doing this week and we can wrap up the podcast. All right. Okay, Steven. How you I'm doing? excited. Why? February is lit. It definitely is. Mother's lit. birthday cracked it off. We in this bitch. Oh, God. I was poetry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. I'm about to be OG status. On uh next a few days, head down up over around to Vegas <laughs> for my auntie's wedding. Jesus Christ, we <laughs> out here, whole fam going. You know, we we lit. We really whole time. Got half I'm of the feeling good. I'm blessed right now. I'm I, I'm I, you know I'm just feeling. We got good. at least I'm a fourth. Right yes. Of the point. Yes, I'm feeling good. And I'm blessed right now. Okay, so what about you, Eric? Uh, it's, it's a real, real busy month for me because, um, yes, we just had my mama's birthday, her birthday is today, but her birthday party was Friday, so I was doing a lot of things for that, and then Steven's birthday is in a week, so I gotta make sure that I got everything in my ducks in a row for that, and then we about to go to Vegas three days after that, and I'm, we- I'm the wedding planner for that wedding. So I have so much stuff going on for that wedding right now. It's a lot of things coming in. People are getting added. People are leaving. Like, this is crazy. So I got a lot of stuff going on in February. It's real stressful for me. But, I mean, it's fun, though. It's fun. Um, it's, it's, it's busy. It's a busy month. Like, trying to, like, juggle work and then juggle personal life has been a big thing for me. Um. But I I be forgetting that I got another job. I'm a wedding planner as well as me trying to send time with my family as well as me trying to work. So that's just a lot of things that I'm trying to figure out right now with myself. Um. So yeah, it's going to be a wonderful month. I'm going to be super busy. I'm going to be tired, but um, I have made a decision to travel once a month. I put that on my plate as well. So. Wait All a minute. Of that. Wait a minute. Wait Uh-oh, a minute. Wait. wait a minute. What? Once a month? Yes, I'm taking the trip once a month. I can't afford this, so she buy it. <laughs> I don't trust the airplanes like that. Oh, we ain't going we ain't going on a flight every time. Oh, okay. Yeah, some like some trips. of them gonna be road trips too. I think you should start taking it back to road trips. Too. Don't no, nah, you just not scared. You getting on the plane. Watch you get on there, you're not trips. going to care when road trip. I might want to be on a road for twelve flights. hours. Be jet lag. <laughs> I don't want to get lag on the jet. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, how you feeling this week, man? I'm feeling good. I'm chilling, maxing every license. Uh yeah, I'm ready to take off. I'm ready. <laughs> you lame. You not ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I already get it over with. You really. <laughs> <laughs> Watch hey. we get old, it. You gonna be ready to get? I mean, a lot of candy, a lot of gum, everything. Oh yeah, you be okay. Like we gonna have liquor and stuff on the plane. A lot of shots, so a five shots, shots before I get on. Bro, it's gonna be Jesus so fun because all those are gonna be on there. I'd be tipsy. It gonna be tipsy. In the sky. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Y'all should have seen the emoji way put on the, in a group chat to all oh. like all of our aunties and stuff have I a group chat and our family. He put on scared of that. He said, Oh no. Plane. 
I'm, when I'm trying to tell you, just like a bus in the sky, bro. You're not when you're up there. You're not gonna know. Ask Mama. Like station, it was even getting up, walking around. They were scared too. Okay, it's not scary. <laughs> just don't just don't sit by a window seat. No, that's really what I'm mainly gonna do though. I do want to see out the window. I do. Oh, look okay. What? I do want to look down. He's a little more adventurous than y'all thought. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, y'all don't think I'm cap. It just I just <laughs> look cap with no helmet on. I'm telling you. No, but, you uh, are cap because you were not gonna want to no, see no, out no. down. First of all, it's gonna be dark, oh, so you ain't gonna see nothing anyways. Oh uh, yeah, you true. That's you're right. Gonna see a bunch of little get, lights. Come at the Vegas, I ain't gonna try it because it's gonna be lit up once we get to Vegas. Yeah, so it is. You did see right. Yeah, it's gonna be. When nice we light when here. we flying over to the Grand Canyon, we ain't really gonna see nothing because it's gonna be dark. Right. On the way back, I will. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah, you're going to see everything. Yeah, that's lit. <laughs> Mama, how you feeling this week? Happy birthday again. I am feeling fantastic. <laughs> Once again, today is my birthday. The Lord blessed me to see another year. I'm so grateful for that. And today is hashtag Super Hog Sunday. If you guys don't get it, it's Super Bowl Sunday and Groundhog's Day. Hey, 2-2-2020. Two, two, <laughs> yes. 2-2-2020 two, two, is the same frontwards and backwards. Same frontwards and backwards. And I am alive to see it. It's so great. <laughs> like, I'm just feeling so fabulous. I'm on top of the world. And I'm just so grateful. Are you ready for everything you got to do this month? I am so You're ready. You're busy. My, my son, get all, like, my, my up. son, my birthday present, my son... 24 years ago, almost 25 years ago, his birthday is coming. Kobe. Both of my children, Ariel and Steven, threw me the best party ever. I mean, they throw me great parties all the time, so, but this one was really great. I always wanted a Valentine's Day party, and I got one, and it was marvelous. It was fun. It was so fun. We had a great time on Friday night. So, yeah, I'm feeling great. And I am the maid of honor in my yes, sister's upcoming wedding in Vegas on Valentine's Day. I am the maid of honor, and I wore that what, that hat very well. Very. So She's been I doing am everything. So excited! Yes, my sister's going to be a beautiful bride, and I can't wait to be right there for her, as as I've been the whole time. Yeah, so probably. I am just excited. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And feeling so blessed. All righty, y'all. Thank y'all for listening to the podcast this week. We are so happy that y'all look at us like this. Y'all have really been like consistently listening to us. Yes, sir. Liking it. So next thing y'all need to do is subscribe to the page. Subscribe to the page. Okay. Yeah. All right. Show us some love on y'all social media. Uh, we post yeah. our posts and all that, you know. Yeah. And y'all got suggestions, you know what I'm saying? Messages. Hey, right, follow me on uh Snapchat, um, <laughs> Instagram, L Swervo three one seven. You got an underscore? I underscore three one seven. L L underscore Swervo three one seven. Y'all got underscore. I'm sorry. It's cool. All right. Yeah. We, we want them to be here to find you. Man. But y'all gotta like find us. We all like a light. Huh? We all like a light. Yeah. All right. Thank y'all Most for definitely. listening. Bye. What you played?